guys welcome back to my channel i was making sure i was recording i'm actually up early well not it's not an early day i feel like it is because i'm not actually i'm up to be dressed early because for the first time i'm going to vanderbilt to get um blood transfusions now i've had a transfusion once there when i was in the hospital but i've never just gone as like outpatient and so and i have a doctor's appointment too so i thought i would bring my camera out this is what i'm wearing today comfortable but um normally i would wear like if i were here if i were getting my transfusion here i would just wear some sweats and a t-shirt but because we're going to nashville and i feel like putting on some clothes for the first time i, I mean i hardly ever get to get dressed anymore so i decided to actually put on clothes today so yeah just wearing a dress and a sweater some comfortable shoes that's it. So I'm gonna keep filming throughout the day to keep you guys posted. Oh, I gotta put my dogs up. Where's Mario? Come on, Mars, let's go. And um, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. So we made it. I don't even know if you can hear me, but we made it to Nashville. Hello. Um, and I'm just I just checked in, and I'm just hey, waiting on um them to call me I'm doing so I well. can get my labs drawn and um. Yes, ma'am. I just. That's it. Look at how my glasses are fogging up. I just did. Anyway, yes, I was just checking in. We did make it safely. And Mario is working. <laughs> but he's here. I was just calling so, just to say, hey, I call yeah. me back. Okay. And so, I'll check in yeah. in a little bit. Okay, I'm checking in and we are waiting. I have my. Let me show you. Oh, and it hurts too. Hold on. So I have an IV. I've never had an IV back here before. And it hurts. <laughs> but I, I, they stuck me. I was going to try to record them sticking me. But the guy, the nail, the nail I was going to say the nail tech, the LP, the nurse, um, was having issues finding a vein. So they ended up sticking me three times. Um, and they finally got it and Mario and I went to get something to eat. We found this cool little, it's called the grilled cheesery. And um, a matter of fact, I'll show you in a second what it, what our, how cute it was. A picture of our drinks, but um, it was really good. So we had plenty of time after I got my IV to go grab food and then um, come back and then um, we're sitting here, just basically waiting. Mario's sitting in front of me, and he's doing some work. And Mario, you want to say hi? Hello. Wait. Oh, there you are. <laughs> How you doing? Talk to kids. <laughs> so yeah, we're not allowed to sit by each other. So, um, I've never, like I said, this is all new for me here. Like. Huntsville Hospital in, in Clearview Cancer Institute is where I normally go. CCI is like the number one place. And then I also go to Huntsville Hospital um, if I can get in on a Saturday. But usually I'm at CCI in the process. It's just a little different. Um, but I'm not tripping. I'm not complaining. It, um, it's just a different process here. Um, but anyhow, I will cut my phone back on once I get to the back and get situated and go from there. So I'll be back in a minute or 30 minutes, I don't know. All right guys, so they just called me to the back and they went to go get my blood. I don't, do you have one? I got one here, but I'm gonna try to watch up. Oh no, I'm fine. And so now I'm just, relaxing i'm so tired like i know my blood is low it's actually a 6.6 i'll post a picture of my lab so you guys can get an idea as to what i mean when i say it's low because it'll show you what your what your average should be mine is never average so oh i catch my breath it's like walking just from the waiting room to this room which is probably not even 20 feet i'm out of breath and that's because i have a low blood low blood means less oxygen as well so yeah so i could tell the difference um, 
but they haven't started yet so i'll be back so so far i will say i'm already liking that i have a bed and not a chair at cci they got rid of all the beds and so you have to use you have to sit in a chair and it's not the most comfortable it's like a chair like that maybe a little bit bigger but it's not comfortable so i have a bed here and a tv and um, i thought that was coming in here and so i do like that um i'm just really looking forward to getting this blood because i can tell that my energy is is down and once i get this blood it's, it's crazy it's almost like immediately i feel like a whole different person so I need to get the ball rolling so I can start feeling better. I will be back. So, normally, uh, I get Benadryl and Tylenol for my blood. And I get it in my IV because it flushes out the system quick. I don't like to take the pill form because I'll be drowsy the rest of the day. Um, but they're saying they don't normally do that here, so... I know my doctor ordered an IV um, form of Benadryl because she told me she was going to. So I'm just gonna see if they're gonna, if it's gonna show up on my orders because I know my doctor told me that she would make sure that they had that in there. I've never had an allergic reaction in all my years of getting transfused, but I don't know if it's just a superstition thing for me, but I just feel more comfortable knowing that I've had Benadryl before getting the blood to just avoid any type of allergic reaction and it'll make me feel way more comfortable if I took something because um, that's just what I've been doing for so many years I've, I don't even know the last time I've received blood without taking Benadryl so but I'm surprised they don't do that here it's weird to me oh I can oh Mario so I can talk loud now oh so, yeah so we're gonna see I don't know This kind of stuff is so irritating because you really don't know what you're getting into. We'll see. All right, guys. So I have a bag of fluids going in right now. Blood is on its way, and they have my Benadryl. Yes, they just let me know they have it, so I'm glad of that. And um, yeah. They're gonna go get it now. The Benadryl, like I said, I, it I like it in my IV better than the pill because in the IV it flushes out. I'm not. I may get drowsy for like 20 minutes and then I'm, it's gone away. The pill, as y'all know, uh, Benadryl, the pill form, you're drowsy the rest of the day, and I just I don't like feeling like that, especially during the day. If it were at night and I was spending the night, I wouldn't care. But because I'm not spending the night. And I want to be um, alert and, you know, coherent. I prefer just to get it through the IV. Plus, honestly, lucky it feels amazing. Like, if you've never had Benadryl through the IV, you're missing out on life. Um, it feels really good. So, anywho, I'll be back in a little bit. If I want to get my blood and my medicine, and I'll show you guys the next step. Hey, guys. So, the nurse just gave me. Benadryl via IV so I'm very sleepy but it'll wear off in like 20 minutes so I wanted to pop in really quick I'm not gonna I'm gonna try to stay up just cuz I want you guys to see you know when they give me the blood and I, and I hope you can feel how you'll see the difference once I get even after one unit like I my whole body is just feels refreshed afterwards so i want to make sure i get that but i just wanted to pop in before they came in to let you know that i did get my benadryl and a tylenol and so i'm gonna lay here and try to stay awake um but even if i fall asleep it's gonna wear off which is good so i'll be back so i was trying to let you guys see what an actual this is one unit of blood i get two units every time um, I'm O positive, but I'm receiving O negative with the RH factor of something. Because basically, once you have so many um, 
transfusions over time, your your body produces different antibodies that are sometimes difficult to, um, I can't even describe. Well, it's just kind of difficult. You can't just, like, if, if I were to need blood, like, Mario can't just give me blood, like, if he goes to donate. They have to, like, add different antibodies and different things to it to make me more, to make it more compatible for me. But that doesn't mean I can't receive his blood. It just means that there's just, it's just a different t price process than if I were just a regular, like, one-time recipient and haven't had transfusions over my, over the course of my life. So, um, that's the difference. But I don't know where they get their blood from. I know, um... We get a lot of our blood at home from Life South Community Blood Centers because Life South, I used to work there years ago, by the way. Life South Community Blood Centers, all their blood stays in the community, whereas like Red Cross, their blood can go to the Bahamas, it can go to wherever it's needed in the world, basically. Um, so I always recommend people to donate to Life South first because you know where your blood is going. So it could be going to your grandmother, it could be going to your mom, somebody who's just given birth, it could be going to me. You really never know, but you do know it's going somewhere within your community. Now, like I said, I'm in Nashville, so I don't know, you know, where this blood is from. I guess I could get up and see it because it should have a, it should say where it's from, but I'm, it, I don't know. But so at home, if you are able to donate blood, you um, should, your first choice should be to Life South. If you, for some reason, can't get to a local blood bank, then of course go to Red Cross because donating, period, is a blessing to anybody who might need it. Um, and I think, from my understanding, there's a shortage um, because I guess with everything that's going on. So if you find it um, in your heart and you're healthy and you are allowed to donate blood, then you should definitely definitely look into it. My whole family cannot donate, like my parents. Um, number one, my mom has a trait. And secondly, um, actually my mom and my dad has a trait. But also because we lived in Germany during the mad cow disease, um, and they still have not changed that rule, even though mad cow was in the late 80s, um, and none of us were affected by mad cow. But because we lived in Germany during the time of mad cow, if you lived in Germany during that time, you cannot donate blood in the United States. Isn't that crazy? That's To me, that's ridiculous. Also, if you are gay male, you cannot donate blood, which I find that to be ridiculous as well. I think blood is blood, and I feel like as much of the screening that they do to make sure the blood is good, what's the difference between... Um, somebody else somebody whose preference is men who is a man versus uh, a man who's married to a woman um i guess they're trying to be extra cautious but that's to me that's just an old rule and i think it needs to change because there's too many um ways to clean blood these days that helps reduce the, the chance of any type of infection or of catching aids or anything like that so that all needs to change because um, especially where we live, like we live close to an army base, a lot of soldiers and a lot of retired military live in my city and many of them cannot donate because they once lived in Germany. I think that's ridiculous. There's too many people who are able to donate and they get turned around because the FDA has not stepped into 2020. So, uh, anyway, I'm done with that rant. If you are able to donate, you really, really should. I'm already feeling better. I've only been um, hooked up to this machine for about 20 minutes, and I can already tell the difference in how I'm feeling. That's how quick it works. Like, y'all, when I tell you I was feeling so low, like I had already told Mario, like I said, if for some reason I could not get my blood today, I was probably going to have to have him take me to the emergency room or something because I knew I couldn't go past today because just even showering was a task. I have, I was wore out 
all week long and it was just getting worse and worse every single day and um it was time so here they said they can get the blood in you one bag one hour which i'm excited about because at home one bag is typically two and a half to three hours and um it's very much time consuming and um i hate doing it so if they can get me in and out here in two hours hey i will drive the hour and a half every four to six weeks just you know to save time and also because i know my quality of care here is different so after they hook me up they come in check your temperature and they um come back in 15 minutes to make sure you're not having any allergic reactions and after that they don't bother you again until your bag is empty and then they will come in and then they will verify your bag verify all your information to make sure you are who you say you are and you're the right recipient of that blood and then they hook you up for your second unit and then they check your temperature and your oxygen and then oh and blood pressure and then they come back in 15 minutes and do it again and then after that you let the second bag finish they come out take the IV out and then you're good to go so that's really it um I really wish that I could have gave you more in-depth detail but like I said when the nurse came in with the first with this bag my doctor called right at the same time so I was on the phone with her so I wasn't able to really um film period it's, I was on the phone with my doctor but anyway that is it um I will be back when they get the second unit in okay bye okay I completely forgot to mention I said earlier my parents have the trait and a lot of people might not know what that is the trait is sickle cell trait which means they are carriers of the disease but they don't have the disease so when they got together back in the day um, there were no tests done to check and see if you had sickle cell anemia or even if you had the trait so when they got together they were not aware that they had it um, until I was diagnosed with sickle cell anemia at the age of four they didn't start testing I think until the, <coughs> the 80s I got tested be at two because my mom said I kept complaining about leg pain she thought I was just you know being the spoiled person that I am and that I did not want to walk so she noticed like I was being very persistent and it wasn't like a typical tantrum I really was in pain so she took me to the doctor and they did a test but when I was born they weren't testing for sickle cell anemia so nowadays though they're doing that you know when you're born you get that test and even you can get a you know your partner can get tested I know Amari and I first started dating I let him know straight up you know like I have sickle cell anemia are you familiar with the disease number one and number two, do you have it? Do you have the trait? Because you do want to take that in consideration of when you decide to procreate with someone. Because even though the um, the, the disease has progressed and there are just different, um, the, the level of care is better depending on where you live. We've had that conversation. But you still want them to be um, aware and you also want to give them that option because some people might not want to even take that risk. I know for us, because I have the disease and he doesn't, um, the chances I think are one in three for us um, having a child with the disease or with the trait. Um, my mom and dad have the trait. One of their kids has a, the disease and one kid has a trait and the other kid does not. So the risks are there. Like I said, there are different things nowadays that, you know, your quality of life can be totally different versus if this were in like the 60s or 70s. Um, it's progressing slowly but surely so that should not be a deal breaker for you and your partner if you are dating someone and they tell you they have the trait or the disease what's really to me more important than just knowing what you about the disease is deciding is that person willing to just kind of go through the trenches with you with the disease because that's also um, very important because I don't think I think if I was with somebody who wasn't supportive and who was not you know understanding of my condition it wouldn't work 
Because there are some days where you're going to be so tired. You're not going to feel good. And you don't need to go to the ER. You don't need to make a doctor's appointment. But you just need to rest. And um, you need to drink fluids. And you need to just kind of like just chill. Like I am a pro at relaxing. Like I love it. But I've noticed for me, relaxing um, is probably one of the reasons why I am not as sick as I probably should be on paper it doesn't it looks bad honestly but I don't look like at all what I'm going through and I have to give that number one up to God and number two because I take care of myself for the most part um, I you, you have to really know your own body I say this all the time but you have to know your own body and you need to take time and relax like you can't with this disease you cannot just be out here like just going crazy partying drinking smoking and like um not sleeping well all those kind of things i'm the queen of relaxation if you ask anybody that knows me one thing i'm good at is leisure i am a lady of leisure like i don't mind just chilling being at home i don't have to do anything and i honestly think that's what's helped me stay healthy for me um, there are some people with th this disease, they live a harder life. And uh, it shows in the way they look. It shows in the way they feel. And I'm just thankful. So, yeah, you need to um, have those conversations with your partner, you know, when you guys are serious. And <clears throat> that either they're going to be okay with it and they're going to stand by you 100% or they're going to be scared and they're going to run away. Mario, at first, I think it was intimidating because he didn't know, he didn't know anything about it. And so my mom was always just like, boom, right there. And it started making him feel like, well, dang, am I not, like, do you not think I'm competent enough to take care of you? Because I notice every time you get sick, the first person you call on is your mom. So I, I mean, it has, it was some adjusting, you know, because this is all we've known. This has been our routine, my mom and I, for years. Sorry, the nurse came in. So we got, my mom and I were just used to a certain routine. I mean, my dad, he's just, you know, the routine is my mom and I. <laughs> my dad, this is, my dad can't I handle it. But, uh, yeah, so you have to give with somebody who's okay with the journey. Because if you don't, that can bring you down too. I Imagine if you're with somebody and you're sick and they, like, they don't pick up the slack. Mario picks up my slack all the time. Like. That's just a blessing. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about that today. I really was just trying to explain the, what the trait was and um, and how you can get tested. I had Mario when we got, I think we were engaged, and I had him go take a blood test because he wasn't sure. Um, and he does not have the trait or the disease, so um, that was a good thing. Um, but like I said, even if, it, even if it came back, he had the trait or... The disease I mean we'll roll with it anyways because you know we are not um, intimidated by this at all you know and it's just a blessing to be married to somebody who um, even though they didn't get it at first um, he didn't understand it so he didn't know what to do so now oh he's on me like white on rice like are you drinking enough water or you need to sit down somewhere or go go lay down you know he's really very very like making sure I'm taking care of myself because sometimes, like he says, my, in his words, I'm doing too much. Like, I don't know how to chill sometimes. But um, for the most part, I can chill now. But so, um, yeah, I just wanted to explain what the trait was. It's just basically your carrier of the disease. That's it. So we're still on unit one. They said here they push out one unit per hour, which is cool. like halfway done y'all and I'm already feeling better I'm trying to talk low because I'm in this room I don't want to be loud and the door is semi open a little bit so anyway I'll be back all done we are leaving again to go you know I'm okay um we got, I think we have to get the keys, right? 
Okay, so the time is now 6.19. The day started for me. I got up at like 8. Mario got up, I think, at like 7. Right turn and it is 6.19. So it's been a very long day, but I feel so much better. And um, I'm going to go home and just keep resting. Usually what I do is after a transfusion, I just go home and relax. Um, well, normally if we were here for a regular appointment, we would go find a nice restaurant to eat in Nashville before we left to come to Huntsville. But because of coronavirus, we can't go anywhere and sit inside. So we're probably gonna hit up a drive-through and just um, make it a quick, simple dinner, snack, whatever you wanna call it. And Left then go turn home ahead because onto Wedgwood we Avenue. can't eat it anywhere. Anywho, but I just want to take you guys with me on this journey. I'm all done. I feel so much better. Like, I just feel better. The fact that I'm talking and not yeah. doing that makes me, I know I'm feeling better already. It doesn't take that long for the blood to start making you feel Continue on the like a whole different person. So, I will catch you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Bye.